Looking for a classic movie filled with laughter, shocks, and heart-wrenching moments? Look no further than Nocturna. This 1979 film boasts an ensemble cast and a plot that keeps you hooked from start to finish. As you watch, keep an eye out for your favorite classic Hollywood actor. There are plenty to choose from. But here's the catch Nocturna isn't just any movie. It's packed with funny, shocking, and even sad facts that will keep you on the edge of your seat. So, if you're ready for a roller coaster ride of emotions, keep watching. Now, we want to hear from you what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We can't wait to hear them. Keep the nostalgia flowing and the memories alive. Keep watching, keep sharing, and keep the conversation going. Nocturna, released in 1979, is a peculiar blend of disco and vampire lore. Despite its flaws, it captivates viewers with its unique charm. The lead actress, Nai Bone, also the writer, contributes a memorable performance. However, some find her portrayal lacking authenticity. The ensemble cast, including Carradine, DiCarlo, and Brother Theodore, adds depth to the film. Brother Theodore's comedic presence is particularly notable. Additionally, the film's gritty New York City street scenes offer a raw authenticity. Despite its unconventional appeal, Nocturner remains a divisive cult classic, drawing viewers in with its irresistible train wreck of a plot. In the late 1970s, a film emerged that brought together an eclectic cast of characters, each adding their own unique flair to the story. Among them was a former Playboy playmate, whose background added an interesting layer to her role. Another actor, making his debut, showcased his talents alongside seasoned performers, all coming together to create an intriguing cinematic experience. Despite a tight schedule, the scenes featuring two veteran actors were efficiently captured within a week, highlighting the production's streamlined approach. Throughout the film, these diverse elements converge to create a dynamic on-screen landscape. In just a week's time, two experienced actors breathe life into their characters, while newcomers left their mark on the narrative. The blend of backgrounds and talents enrich the story, turning it into a memorable piece of cinema. The convergence of these elements serves as a reminder of the careful orchestration of talents and resources in filmmaking. Despite the challenges, the result was a concise yet impactful tale that showcased the abilities of all involved. In the late 1970s, a captivating collaboration unfolded between two seasoned actors, bringing them together once again for a venture into horror. Starring alongside each other in various films and TV shows, their professional rapport was undeniable. This particular movie, filmed swiftly in autumn 1978 and released by March 1979, marked their fourth collaboration, showcasing their chemistry on screen once more. The male lead had previously portrayed Count Dracula in three other films, while the female lead was known for her diverse roles across the entertainment industry. Their partnership extended beyond this movie, with appearances together in other projects, reinforcing their strong working relationship. The movie's quick production allowed audiences to witness their dynamic performances in yet another thrilling tale of horror. In 1979, alongside several other Dracula-themed movies, one film emerged, directed, and written by Harry Hurwitz, who went by the name Harry Tampa. This marked his last credit under that alias. Among the cast, Yvonne DiCarlo portrayed Jugulia Vane, a character cleverly named after the jugular vein. It was a year where vampire lore dominated the silver screen with titles like Dracula, Nosferatu the Vampire, Love at First Bite, and Dracula Blows his cool hitting theaters. Additionally, Vlad Tepes, a Romanian film centered around the historical figure that inspired Count Dracula, saw its release. Joining the fray were Thirst and Salem's Lot, making 1979 a memorable year for vampire enthusiasts. Back in 1979, a movie made waves with its unique way of getting attention. The star, Nai Bone, posed semi-nude in a magazine to hype up the film before its release. This bold move aimed to get people talking and build excitement. When the film came out in Germany, it was advertised with the tagline, A Tender Nightmare. This phrase hinted at something delicate yet unsettling about the movie, giving viewers a taste of what to expect. Behind the scenes, Nai Bone played a big part in making the film happen. She raised $350,000 for the production, with a hefty $100,000 going towards the music. This showed how much importance they put on making sure the music added to the whole experience of watching the film. In short, the way the movie was promoted, the tagline used internationally, and Nai Bonet's commitment to the project all give us a glimpse into what made this 1979 movie special. It blended boldness with something delicate, and the focus on music made it even more memorable. In one scene, the bustling streets of Times Square showcased authentic reactions from unsuspecting New Yorkers. 
Thy bonnet, wired with a microphone, seamlessly blended into the crowd, capturing candid moments. Inside the Biesa Club, a cryptic abbreviation for Bloodsuckers of America, the film delved into the underworld of nocturnal creatures. Meanwhile, within the eerie confines of a New York church, Nibone's intimate bathing scene unfolded, discreetly filmed to avoid any unwanted attention. The juxtaposition of real-world settings with fantastical elements added depth to the narrative, creating a unique viewing experience. During the disco era, a cool spot called the Starship Discovery One Disco popped up, aiming to be as popular as Studio 54. It had a spaceship theme and was three stories tall, attracting a lot of attention. People wanted memberships just to get inside. Eventually, it shut down around the time a certain movie was released. One character in the film, R.H. Factor, got its name from something in human blood. It's called the R.H. Factor, also known as the Rhesus Factor. This thing is important in blood groups because it's a big deal for the immune system. John Carradine, who was in a bunch of movies, shared roles with his co-star Jack Palance from a movie in 1970. Carradine played Count Dracula in a bunch of films like House of Frankenstein and Billy the Kid vs. Dracula, while Palance played Dracula in another movie. Carradine also played Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol, which Palance also did in Ebenezer. In the film, Nocturne reveals that her name originates from Transylvania and signifies of the night. One notable filming location was an unused vault beneath the Brooklyn Bridge. This space, sealed for a century, underwent reopening and cleaning specifically for the movie's production. Additionally, the film featured John Carradine and Yvonne DiCarlo, who had collaborated on various projects before. This particular film marked their final joint endeavor. In a 1978 interview, Yvonne DiCarlo revealed her character's full name to be Juga Levain. The film shares several similarities with Love at First Bite, released in the same year. Both are horror comedies featuring disco dancing and star an actor with the surname Hamilton. Additionally, both are set in Transylvania in New York in 1979. John Carradine's costume is the same one that he wore in House of Dracula. In 1979, a film featured a theme song, Love is Just a Heartbeat Away, sung by Gloria Gaynor. Interestingly, Gaynor agreed to perform the song as a courtesy to her then-manager, whom she later married. In a 28 interview, she expressed her candid opinions about the song, deeming the title corny, the lyrics dreadful, and the arrangement as already badly dated during the recording. During a particular disco sequence in the film, the Starship Discovery Disco, many dancers were drawn from the cast of Saturday Night Fever, serving as extras in this production. The version of Gloria Gaynor's song in the film, titled Love is Just a Heartbeat Away, differs from the soundtrack and remixes. An additional verse, cut from other releases, appears in this film version, specifically featured in a 12 single labeled as the long version. This behind-the-scenes insight sheds light on the production nuances and collaborative elements in bringing Nocturna to the screen. In the world of cinema, there's a tale that echoes the resilience of its creators despite facing setbacks. Picture a realm where darkness reigns, where vampires navigate a web of love, deceit, and power struggles. Visual enchantment fills the screen, captivating audiences with its nocturnal charm. During production, tragedy struck, shaking the cast and crew to their core. Yet, they pressed on, driven by their passion for storytelling. Despite budget woes and artistic disagreements, they birthed a haunting masterpiece. Upon release, the film faced a lukewarm reception, failing to leave a mark. However, time proved kind as the movie found its audience becoming a cult favorite. Today, it stands as a reminder of creativity and perseverance in the face of adversity. Its tale lives on, a symbol of storytelling's timeless allure.